best driver's room prank you've witnessed or been a part of? Uh, recently I just got my thousandth win and they gave me a little billboard there to, just congratulating me and they bring it up to the driver's room and I leave it there and everyone kind of sees it and then I go out on the track for the next race and uh, when I come back in Chris Bays was nice enough and put it up there on the ceiling filling a hole that a uh, water leak happened so uh, all I could really do was just kind of laugh it off and they kind of felt bad about it and took it down for me and uh, <laughs> that's it. Another one I've been a part of was uh, me and James McDonald were regulars up at Kawartha when I first got here and uh, we'd leave right from Flamborough from the afternoon car and head up to Peterborough to race there and uh, when I got there they announced 10 minutes you got to get ready stuff like that so I started getting ready and now I'm panicking because I can't find my helmet. I go over to my truck and I try and find it it's not in my bag. So now they say one minute. So now I'm just freaking out. I can't find a helmet. So I grabbed Dogfin Hendrickson's, who's got a blue helmet. So it doesn't really suit too well with my suit. And uh, as soon as they say bring out the horses for the first race, James comes out with my helmet on. He hid it in the closet on me. <laughs> it never gave it to me until right before we hit the track. So I was panicking pretty good. So those are the two best pranks I've been a part of. Uh, I haven't been part of any, but I've witnessed many. And there's too many to talk about. But maybe one of them would have been where they glued, uh, I believe it was a quarter to the floor in front of Trevor Ritchie's locker. And uh, he couldn't pick it up because Trevor's known to pick up pennies and whatever's on the floor money-wise. Well, one time we gave a, one of the fans somebody else a suit from up there and they were wearing it around here all day. So one guy wasn't very happy about that. It wasn't me though. <laughs> uh, one time I had um, my I went to go drive I was late and I went and my gloves were turned inside out and when I went to go turn them back inside they had candy wrappers inside <laughs> of each finger so not only did I have to take them back out but then candy wrappers were inside and I've seen the old whipped cream and a helmet before and stuff so oh we have fun I'll tell you one of the funniest ones because my brother and I always always play pranks on one another Mark all the time and James and Curtis but Mark and I were always playing pranks on one another or on other people. And Mark thought it would be really funny to uh, play a prank on Luke Willette one time, and I, I can't remember. <laughs> I, think, I think he cut the ass out of his pants or something. <laughs> it was super fun. It's the funniest thing I ever saw. <laughs> but Luke, like, never even, he never gave him the satisfaction of laughing at him. He just walked away, and that was that. And it was the next week, we were all at <laughs> Flamborough. And at Flamborough, they have the driver's room, and they have, like, little seat kind of bench things. Everybody inside your lockers, right? So <laughs> Luke, Luke went over to the maintenance shed and got nails <laughs> that long and put Mark's shoes up on the bench <laughs> and nailed right through the sole of the shoes. And if you know Mark, one, he's the cheapest man on earth. <laughs> Two, he gets really flustered easy. And three, he doesn't take pranks well that are done to him. <laughs> so, and he went to grab his shoes. It was the funniest thing I think I have ever seen in my life. Like, all the pranks that we've done are funny, but every time somebody says a prank about Mark, that one immediately comes to mind. And I'm telling you, Mark was so stubborn, he walked, he left in his driving boots, and he left those shoes nailed to that bench for literally nine months. <laughs> and he would not, would not take them out. Uh, it was, yeah, by far the funniest thing ever. I witnessed uh, Luke nail Mark's shoes to the... To the top of the locker in uh, Flamborough, but I think he, Luke was getting them back for cutting the pockets out of the back of his pants. <laughs> I don't think Mark realized either that they were $150 designer jeans. <laughs> <laughs> well, I watched uh, I watched someone nail down Mark McDonald's shoes to his locker floor one time, and I watched somebody put some dye inside a pair of boots one time on purple feet. There's been a number of them. The best prank is probably, it would be Mark McDonald for sure, something he did to Rick Zeron, I guess. Um, Ricky is unbelievably superstitious about colors, and uh, Mark one time put uh, yellow tape around one of Ricky's really nice leather jackets. <laughs> I don't think Ricky ever wore it again. Uh, again, I was in Kawartha, but there was a gold last year in Mark, and a bunch of people were down for it. I think it was three-year-old Pace and Colts or whatever, maybe Trotters, I, I can't remember. Anyway, we get down there early and I'm signing into the book and Mark comes behind me and he signs his name in the gold final, so uh, they're going for 130000 he scratches Phil Houdon's horse out of the race. So Phil's traveling with Mark, he comes strutting up a couple minutes later, 
Are you kidding me? And throwing himself and Mark standing around the corner laughing. <laughs> this friggin' got a lot worse language though, cursing and swearing and throwing himself. So then the paddock judge heard him and told him and then, then he wouldn't talk to Mark for about a day or two. <laughs> Probably one time Mark McDonald put a bunch of shoe polish on the inside of Guy's helmet. And the guy put his helmet on, then when he took it off, he had the big black mark on his forehead. That was pretty cool. I try not to take take part in too many because I know payback's just not what I want to be in line for, so. Um, I'm trying to remember if there's been too many lately. Since Mark McDonald's left, there's been a lot less. Turning gloves inside out. Um, you know, misplacing things when you're ready to go, like putting your glasses, uh, arms on upside down, things like that were pretty cool. So, uh, there's been a million of them over the years. Uh, there's been so many that that used to be, that used to be all we did in the driver's room at the Meadowlands. Mark McDonald is definitely missed here in the driver's <laughs> room. He, uh, he was a good one on those. Ronnie Pierce, Ronnie Pierce, very, very good. Uh, what I used to love doing to Ronnie Pierce is uh, before you could see me do it I would cut off the pinky out of his glove and wait for him to put the gloves on in the back paddock and by then he would have to drive without a pinky all night. I used to love doing that. 